Hey everyone, it's that time again. We're going to discuss CMake, specifically third-party libraries. In the last video, we talked about libraries and how they make your code more modular and you can keep reusing components over and over. And historically, they were a nightmare to maintain. You had to compile them separately and you had to make sure that the code was all um, independent or whatever. And uh, anyway, CMake makes it easy and there's a lot of benefits to using them. However, you're probably not going to want to write every single library that you ever use. That's a little bit crazy. That's another benefit of libraries is you can use other people's libraries. So we're gonna get into that today. We're going to show you the tools that you need to make it work. And then also we're going to use SDL2 as an example. If you're more interested in, or I should, let me rephrase that. If you're interested in more SDL2 videos, I also have a series discussing those. So be sure to check that out. And if you want to help the channel and you're not currently subscribed, I would also request that you can, might consider subscribing to the channel. Maybe even hitting that like button because you know, YouTube and the algorithm. All right. Enough said about all that fun little marketing stuff. Let's actually get into the topic at hand here. We need to install package config. Now there's two versions. One is package C-O-N-F and one is dash config. And my system came with this one by default. And right before this video, I wanted to make sure that I had the right thing installed and I started to type this in and it said it was going to replace this. So I'm like, well, what on earth is the difference? So I used Google and Google says that package CONF is newer, actively maintained, implement, uh, newer and actively, there's a comma there, but anyway, implementation of package dash config. So I'm assuming that this is better. And if you scroll down, it appears that this is better. So why should I argue with Google? We're going to go with that. So we open up a terminal window here and we'll do sudo apt install package config. And ta-da, I'm already up to date, but you might not be and we will find out together because I actually have not tested this new package config thing. So it'll be a surprise for all of us. All right, so that covers that. Let's look at our CMake list. So in our example here, our project's called Packages. We are doing that fun output directory stuff. If you don't recognize any of this, that's in another video. It allows us to organize all of our outputs in a nice little tree, rather than it just being buried in the build folder. We are including directories. And then after that, we um, add our executable, which is just main.cpp. There is nothing currently in here, and if I build this, it should not fail. We'll use GCC. Yep, everything's fine. If we go into binary folder, uh, there's our packages executable. Okay, it doesn't actually do anything. So let's make it do something. Let's say we want to add SDL support, as promised. Well, now that package config is on here, we should be able to type in find package and the package we're going to want is SDL2 and we're also going to mark that this is a required package because um, honestly I don't exactly understand why you would ever include something that's not required I guess maybe a debugger or something but generally it seems like you would kind of need it so we're gonna add it all right, after that, we need to do include directories. So here we have just a period, which means include anything that's located in here. So if we have any header files, it will find them in our source directory. However, when we include uh, the sdl.h uh, header file, that is clearly not in here. So we need to add it somehow. So the way we're going to add it is include directories and it's called, well, we need to use the dollar sign curly braces because it's a variable SDL2 include DIRS, very creatively named. 
Now you might be wondering, does this always follow suit? Is like this says SDL and this says SDL underscore include underscore directories. And if I wanted to use some other package like um, <laughs> testing my memory here, uh, I'm sure there's an OpenGL one. Um, will it be the exact same thing? Will it be OpenGL underscore include underscore directories? Yes, from what I have seen, this is always the case. Now there's probably an outlier out there somewhere, but from what I have seen, it's always the name of the package, underscore include underscore dir, D-I-R-S for directories. So whatever package you want to include, that is the way to include it. Well, now we're on the subject. We probably need SDL on our system, don't we? Yes. So the way to do that on Linux, or specifically in Debian, Ubuntu, Linux Mint world, is sudo apt install lib sdl2 dash dev. I'm assuming that's what it is. Yes, dev. So it generally will always start with lib. There's probably a weird one out there that doesn't, but generally it always starts with lib the name of your package, dash dev, and the dash dev is usually very important. That actually allows you to develop with the package. It doesn't just add support on your system. It allows you to actually develop with the, the library. So I already have that, and now you do too. All right, so you might be thinking, uh, great, I can come in here now and I can include um, let me make sure I get that path just right SDL 2 dash SDL dot H yes I don't know why they did it this way but you do need to include the two the slash and then the SDL dot H um, so now I can I can write my code right SDL I don't know, surface, blah, 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 blah. It found all of this stuff for me automatically. Thank you, IntelliSense. However, you'll remember from the other video, we still need to link. Just because we can find it during compile time doesn't actually mean it would work during runtime because we need to link the library in with our project. So let's do that next. So what we do is we do our target link libraries. This should look very similar to what we did when we created our own library. And again, we are going to use our project name because that's the one that we want to link against. Oh, come on, IntelliSense. Work with me here. There we go. And Again, we're going to use one of these little magic created variables, and it's going to be SDL2 underscore having issues typing today, apparently, libraries. And again, this is like this other one where it's from what I have seen, it is just the package name and then followed by underscore libraries. So let's see if this compiles. We'll need to actually add something that's SDL-like. Let's put in, oh, let me see. Um, just something simple that won't actually do a whole lot, but it's enough to throw an error if we actually did it wrong. So we'll just say we want to initialize the video subsystem um for SDL. Uh, probably helps if we spell it right. There we go. All right, so if everything's done correctly, it, it obviously recognizes it out of the header file. That's super cool. And it should be able to actually find the implementation of this because we have linked it. So let's see if we get an error or not. Uh, no errors. Um, it, it didn't bomb out. If we step through the code, oh, that's funny. Let's 
step through it and actually yeah it's not it's not throwing any garbage out at us that is saying that it's failing or blowing up or that there's problems so we can assume that it's working obviously this is not a video on SDL it's just something that I have handy but it shows the the point so um, a quick recap is you just type in the name of your package using find package in the package config that we installed originally allows this find package to work properly uh, include directories is the name of your package followed by this after that we need to link our executable or library if it's a library but anyway link it using package name followed by libraries all right well that is everything I hope you found this video educational and enjoyable and all those other fun things we look forward to seeing you in the next video